doesn't miss none other than Miss Money Long. Money yeah. Long. Congratulations Welcome. on all your success. Thank you, thank you. Because as you know, as a newer artist, for you to be finding success in these venues like early, that's so dope and much respect to you, especially in this music climate where people have to go online and download and, and streams is crazy. And for you to be getting that type of love is just dope. And you're staying so I'm humble. Super with grateful. It. Super. How and to be helping bring R and B back, you revive one of the artists that's really reviving true R and B, bringing back love songs, bringing right. that feels. You know what? Um, it's always been a dream of mine to sort of like breathe life into the industry, period. Because I've been doing this for almost 15 years, and it was it's a lot different today yeah. than it was in 2008, 2007. So I always said, like, I want to save music. Like, you know, I want to be doing this until I'm 70 years old. But at the rate it's going, it, it may not be around. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? At the level that I'm used to and that we like to consume music at, it just ain't, it ain't, the math ain't mathing. So yeah. um, I'm starting in R&B. And hopefully I can, you know, maneuver and move over to some other genres. But right now, I'm sitting pretty comfortable you know, serving my people, giving y'all this music, talking about things that we go through. Yeah. It's been fun. Yeah. What what other genre of music or maybe even hip hop that you would like to like tap into? I would love to tap into rap and you know, I feel like I'm not a rapper, but the way that you do that is to like collaborate with rappers um, and give them like those R and B mainstream pop hits. You know, like how we used to have in the early two thousands, nineties, where it was a rapper and a singer. Yeah. yeah. Um, pop music, obviously, that's where I started in this game, writing pop songs for other artists. Country music, I've also done that, had a lot of success there. I got a number one in um, country music with Carrie Underwood and Miranda Lambert. Hold on, hold on, a number one country music song? Yeah, yeah. that's dope. Come on now, we can't just act like we didn't hear you say that. <laughs> Gotta give it up for that. Yeah, so, you know, I, I mean, I would do rock. I love rock. I, I actually That love, would be dope. I love classical music. I just love music. Right. Let yeah. me ask you this, for you to be doing music almost 15 years and to still be considered a new artist, I was how, do you, how do you take that? I'm grateful. I'm grateful because it's billions of people in the world, right? So I feel like I'm going to be working until I'm done, like until I die, to make sure that my music and my creations touch every piece of the earth. Right. You know, it's certain people in certain countries that don't have a TV, they don't have a radio, and they get music through word of mouth. Right. Still, today. So, you know, I, it's never um, no ego. It ain't never like, you don't know who I am, like, and I learned that from Mariah Carey. She walked into a room of people and be like, hi, I'm Mariah. She introduced herself like, we don't know who she is. <laughs> right. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, you never know, man. If, if it's people that still don't know who Beyonce is, I got a lot of work to do. Yeah, but what do you say, like, being in the game for 15 years and, like you said, still kind of being introduced to a lot of audiences, what do you say to, like, new artists or people that's just tapping in or even the next generation that think everything is, like, overnight success, quick, you um, know, all I, you need I, is one hit? Yeah, that, that's an issue, but I don't think it's just with the newer generation because, like, even my mom, my dad, my uncles, my aunties, people who are used to doing things a certain way, they quit so easy, like, when they uh, encounter the first little piece of resistance, yeah. they be like, oh, you know, they throw their hands up. And it's like, no, you gotta keep pushing, you gotta keep moving, it doesn't matter. That person that told you no, or that's standing in your way, that doesn't mean that you're not great, that just means that they don't have the capacity to help you. Yeah. So you just gotta keep grinding until those people, you know, notice you or you're amplified to the, to the point where they can't ignore you. Right, now you got one of those songs I won't say one, but you know exactly the song I'm referring to that gives that, that soulful black love feeling. And it's like, how do, you, how do you capture that moment when people hear you and they're like, it's the same effect as like how soulful Anthony Hamilton is, or it's like that genre with Jill Scott. It's like you found that pocket where it's like, Ooh, this that good clean up the house. Whether I'm, you know what I mean? Like, I can yeah. make love to this, or I can clean up Saturday. I can to this. cook like, to this, like, it feel like loving. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, what is Money Long's ingredients to doing something like this? I don't know, just being real. Like, I, I'm, I'm a lover. I don't want to fight you. 
I will run you over with my car if you hit me. <laughs> but I prefer love. I prefer, you know, treat everybody like family. Like, we all cousins out here. You know right. what I'm saying? And so I just put my true feelings in the song. Um, I think maybe that's what resonated with people is just the authenticity. And it's a lot of conversations about relationships and what can I curse on him? You can say yeah. whatever the fuck you want to. What niggas ain't doing, how <laughs> bitches ain't shit. Like, it's so much of that toxic conversation. Right. And I feel like the only people who talk like that are people who never experienced real love. And also, um, I'm a little Delulu. So, like, it don't matter how mad I am with my husband, I'm still, at the end of the day, I want my fairy tale. And so, if I want my fairy tale, I got to create it. Yeah. I have to create the space for it. You know, people ask me all the time, how you get married so young? I was behaving like a wife when I was single. And it's a lot of people that ain't going to do that. You know what I'm saying? Also, marriage ain't all it's cracked up to be. That's what it's work. It's not just, oh, my God, you love me so much, you bought me roses. That is work. It is a relationship. You know what I'm saying? Like, you ain't going to always like your boss, but your boss sign your check. So you got to behave in a certain way if you want to get that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. How do you so, manage them times, like you said, when you might not always like each other, but you love each other? So you like. You just go to your corner. Just like, fam, I'm over here. Leave me alone. I'm watching my movie. And then when you get hungry, hey, what you trying to eat? Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just like sometimes you might argue with your sister or your brother. Mike can't stand your mama. Mike can't stand your daddy. But that's still my family. Yeah. So my husband is my family no matter what. Like if, if we stay together or not, that's my family. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes I can't stand him. Sometimes he do get on my nerves. Sometimes he walk up behind me when I'm brushing my teeth and scares the living daylights out of me and make me want to punch him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But it's just like, this is the person who I'm going to break up with and make up with for the rest of my life. You know what I'm saying? And I think a, a lot of people won't agree with that. A lot of people might say, oh, I don't know if it's possible for women to be simps, but. <laughs> to be simps. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like. You gotta fight for what you want. You gotta work right. for what you want. You gotta work for the good. Like nothing is free. Nothing don't come easy. And I think like a lot of people have this like delusional idea of what relationships are, period. Like not just romantic, but friendship, um, work relationship, your relationship between you and God. Like they not really putting in the work. No. Mm. Well, you know, back to the music I wanted to talk about, because you, you were talking about adventuring into other genres, but we backstage right now. We're backwoods behind One one Music Fest live here in Atlanta. Are there any artists here that you hoping to maybe, like, run into or possibly want to collab with, work with in the future? Um, I don't be wanting to run into nobody, because if you shade me and <laughs> you start acting funny in person, I'm... Oh, you like, it's on site. I'm be like, oh, you oh, you don't know me now? Okay, period. Oh, <laughs> right. Keep that same energy. So um, I don't be wanting to run into nobody. Like, they here to work. Y'all do y'all thing. But I do want to see Kodak. Um, okay. I want to see Meg. I want to see Janet. I've never seen her live. Um, and then tomorrow, of course, there's a lot of dope artists performing as well that I want to see. Mm -hmm. Anybody you would look to or like to collab with on some work? I would love to collab with anybody who's on my same frequency. Like, if we in alignment, if it's meant to be, let's do it. Let's create some music that's going to change the world. Um, but I'm not trying to force nothing. Like, I'm in this space right now of just complete authenticity. If it's meant for me, it's meant for me. If it's not, sayonara. I you see how she said it. that, like, she easy to get in touch with. Like, you are money long. Right. No, it doesn't matter. <laughs> like, I just made a post about this on my Instagram. Like, people be price gouging. You know, it's, it's all kiki, ha ha, oh, hey, girl, in your face. But then, it, you know, and it could be, like, the management, the lawyers, but I don't be with all that. I, do you want to do it or not? That's a hell of an attitude to take. I mean, because I'm straight. I know where my help come from. God going to make sure I'm straight. So whether you get on the boat and, and join me in my success, I'm still going to be good, I don't, you know? I was going to ask that as an artist, like, would you want to work with another artist just because you know y'all can make a hit, or do you feel like you got to really vibe with them on a real level first? I feel like energy is first. So I don't got to be best friends with you, but you can sit down with somebody for two minutes and just exchange a few words and, and know where that person is vibrationally. If they talk about other people gossiping, hating, like, all right, this might not go that far because I don't be on that. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I remember one time I had a, um, a moment in the studio where J. Cole was there, and I, I was just having a bad day that day, and I started just talking trash. I was talking to my other friend, Teron, Rock City, who's also an artist and songwriter and Cole came in the room 
and within two minutes, he did not even, he, like, sat down, he heard what we were talking about, and he got up and left. And I just remember being like, damn. What we why say? Did, why did he do that? Yeah. But then I realized, like, my frequency, we wasn't on the same frequency. He, he not on that. Right. You know, complaining and, like, man, why these niggas always trying to play us and, you know, who they think they is? That kind of conversation does not um, circulate in higher level rooms. So, you know. I love that he got up and left, though, and just, like, didn't even try to interject, but just immediately protected his energy. He didn't energy. judge me. He didn't say nothing bad. He sat there. He listened for, like, a minute, and then he got up and left. Yeah. Because I'll be, if I, sometimes when I'm in them situations, I'll be, like, trying to bring the frequency up. Like, okay, let me, but no, just leave. Because what happens is when you're high vibrational like that, most likely those people are going to bring you down. You're not going to be able to bring them up. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And if you do, you're going to expend so much energy trying to bring those people up to your frequency that you won't have any more energy so eventually you it's like it's almost like a battery like you have a limited amount until you refresh it right yeah so like i'm not gonna sit up here and argue with y'all because all it's gonna do is deplete me of my high frequency and then i'm gonna end up having a f charge up on yours which is low yeah you know what i'm saying yeah you got it all figured out not everything well a lot of it <laughs> <laughs> like the first part at least no, I, sure. I got a little bit not a lot yeah so, like, you were talking about marriage earlier. Mm -hmm. How is it difficult to maneuver through the industry as a wife? No, it's actually better because I don't care about no nigga. Right. None. And my confidence is such that um, because I have somebody that I can bounce things off of and because I know I got my partner at home, like, no matter what happens, we might not even been having a good day that day together. But if I come, we are united against, you know, outside forces. So it doesn't matter what anybody thinks about me. I don't care. Any male can't tell me shit because the only person that I'm listening to is my husband and God. You can't tell me nothing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It just it just makes my confidence level so high. Yeah. So and that's because you have that person in your corner that you know like is gonna be there and have your best interest at heart. So. I'm not trying to impress none of y'all. Right. <laughs> if you don't like it, okay. Like I can admit when I don't look the best. When I got on a whack outfit, when my hair don't look right, my makeup, I can admit all of that, like, because it don't matter. <laughs> I got somebody that like it. That's good, though. I think that that's something you really need. Like, a, I think every artist or creative should have that solid foundation. You know, even if it's not before marriage, if it's your homie or your friends or your loved one or just your yourself, mama and daddy, you your know? mama, you need that. So when the comments or everybody hating the shade room or whatever, you know what I mean? You know how crazy it can get. You got that solid foundation in the back. Yeah, and I also think if I d if I was out here single, I would be so distracted because I, l I love love. So if somebody want to take me on a date, I'm going to go. And if somebody want to fly me out, I'm going to go. And, you know, it's like, girl, you need to be working on your music. You need to be rehearsing. I'm like, oh, but, you know, I'm in Dubai. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because you're trying to find love. Yeah, so yeah. I'm glad that I have that checked off. That yeah. is dope. That's dope. Well, what more can we expect from Money Loan? From, from this day going into the future, what can we expect? I'm going to be a lot more vocal, you know, sharing my personality, sharing um, the knowledge that I have. I just started doing it actually yesterday uh, on Instagram, just sharing. Like, I realize a lot of people have no clue how this whole shit works, but they be trying to participate. Right. And so it gets frustrating because it's like, you don't know what you're talking about. Oh, my God. You yeah. know, so instead of complaining about that, I'm going to be the change and start sharing what I know. And then I have a song out right now called Made For Me. It's playing on radio stations all over the US, um, produced by Jermaine Dupree, Brian Michael Cox, and a young producer named Jordan XL. And so I'm promoting that right now. And I think it's in the top 15 at radio. So it's doing pretty well. Um, I got lots more music. I'm gonna drop an album at the top of next year, tour. I ain't going nowhere. I'm about to be in y'all face. Okay, what's, what's the I title of it? Can we get the title? The title of the album? Yeah. Oh, can I give him the title of the album, Nicole? She not. Shaka said, yeah. Okay, Shaka Zulu, if this don't go right, it's your fault. Um, the title of the album is called Everything is a Game. Everything is a Game. Everything is a Game. I like that. Yeah, so that's exclusive. I never told nobody that. Okay, we got an exclusive like out here. Because it's rules to to everything. And Every Everything is a game. Everything is a game. I feel like I used to waitress, right? And so being in the club, you know, that was like a game that I felt like I had to learn. And then once I graduated from the club and went to the entertainment industry, I realized 
This damn near the same game. Hey, what's up? It's your man Carlos Miller. The winter is here, so make sure you keeping the fireplace warm by putting a log on it. You know what I'm saying? With Blue Chew, Blue Chew can increase your performance and give you that extra confidence in the bedroom. The process is simple. You just sign up at BlueChew.com and consult with one of their licensed medical providers. And once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at BlueChew.com. Just chew it and do it. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew for free when you use promo code 85LOUNGE at checkout. You just pay for the shipping. That's $5. That's BlueChew.com, promo code 85LOUNGE. You don't know how to spell lounge. That's L-O-U-N-G-E. Come on now. To receive your first month free, that's all you got to do. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. Chew it and do it. Chew it, then do it. Then do it, do it. And do it again. Then chew another one. Game. I just got to play. The players switch, but... So I like that everything. You just got to know the rules of each game. Each game. The yeah. rules switch a little bit. The players might switch out, but it's all still it's a game. It's all a game. And if you don't know that you're playing a game, baby, you lost already. Yeah. Well, you know, we kicking it with Backwood, so I want to play a little Backwood trivia with you okay, before go. you go, okay? They are, I used you, to smoke. I used to have, um, you know, be a smoker back in the days. Back in the days. Back in the days. Way long time way ago. Way back in the days. <laughs> but I don't do it no more, though. Okay. Well, I need to know how many Backwood flavors are there. Oh, shit. <laughs> Just take a guess. This ain't trivia. This is I a real know, test. I only know, like, four. Okay, well, name me. I was going to ask the next question. Just name me four. It's, and it's like some honey. Okay, that's one. Regular, original, backwoods. Okay. Um, Young, it's grape. Y'all got grape? Yeah, well, it's berry, but we'll berry. accept it. Okay, okay we'll berry. And shoot, like cream, ain't it's like some cream. There you yes, go. Hey. Cream. Hey. Cream. Okay. I'll be gotcha. up in the smoke shops, you know what I'm saying? How many backwoods come in a pack? Three, four, four, five. Five. Actually, five. it's three and five, and sometimes two. It just depends on, yeah, two. the pack you get, right? <laughs> okay. I and sometimes about, one. I have yeah. seen a one pack. I have seen a single as well. Yeah, I was talking about the traditional, but you answered it all. Okay. And what flavor of backwood do you see the most? Like when you out or original? When your because the up? real smoker don't want no flavor. They want to taste the weed. There you go. Period. There you go. You know, I'm I've up been here telling them myself. Hey. No, I'm no, working. I'm working on some things over there with backwoods where we're trying to get like some backwoods reparations. Yeah, for all the, yeah. For the I'm ones, tired of these brands. For the ones that got broken in transit, we're trying to negotiate what that number looks like. Might have had us, a us as a sale. consumer against them as the company, uh -huh. but it's it's real friendly right now. And I'd be so mad when you buy a pack of backwoods and it be dry. Yeah. yeah, I be mad when you buy the pack and they only give you one dog skin bag wood. And the rest of them be oh, like, see, yeah. I, ain't got, I ain't never got I like that my deep. mix. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, because the dog ones burn longer for some I reason. I ain't never they got that stronger. deep. They, yeah, they the, strong. Yeah. The dog skin would do be a little stronger. Oh my gosh, is that Keith Lee? Up. I love him. <laughs> Who we got? I'm Keith Lee, I'm a huge fan. Oh my God. Oh, yeah. Keith Lee. Keith yes. Lee, what's up? Are we backstage. Food critic Keith Lee, come over here. We'll do an interview with Keith Lee. He's amazing. Money Long, we appreciate you stopping Thank through you the 85 so South. Listen, Backwoods I'm a huge Lounge. fan of the show. Would you want to come on the show? Y'all got to have me come back. Will you come on the show? I will. We're going to get your people Absolutely. info so you can come so. on the show. Thank you so much for stopping by. Backwoods Backstage, One Music Fest. It's lit. It's lit. Money Long. Thank you. We out of here.